My name is Marlene Schrader and I'm a board member of the Parker River Clean Water Association and for thousands of years turtles in the Parker River have nested on these fields but now we have soccer fields here and it's important to help the uh, kids that come to play soccer and the people in the community to recognize this natural resource. And so we have this volunteer program and our turtle celebration uh, to celebrate the hatching of all the little baby turtles. And one of my goals was to bring other people from the state environmental agencies here to meet the community people so that they understand that this is a partnership between the community and the state agencies that are, are here today. Yeah, she, would, she gets in touch with me. Time is right. Hi, my name is Margaret Kearns. I'm with the Mass Riverways program, and I'm actually not connected with the turtles at all, but we're working with the local watershed group, the Parker River Clean Water Association, to look at issues of uh, low stream flow in the Parker River. Um, so right in this section right here, the stream flow has actually been seen to go dry. Um, and we're sort of trying to figure out if there's an interaction with the turtles and if, if the, you know, that's good for the turtles or bad for the turtles or what. Um, and what we can do about the problem of the river going dry in general. Um, and so we have some volunteers out here, um, separate from the turtle project, but who are working in the same area, um, monitoring the stream flows above and below the town's water supply wells. Could you please share with us who you are and how your organization is connected to the turtle picnic? Uh, my name is Dennis McNamara. I work for the Massachusetts Division of Fisheries and Wildlife, otherwise known as Mass Wildlife. Um, I am the uh, I am a land protection specialist. So, uh, what my job is to uh, identify. Um, lands that are of particular concern, lands that we should um, protect through, uh, primarily through acquisition. And uh, so my involvement is here in, in, at this event is, is really to, uh, to make additional contacts with, with some of the local folks that I've dealt with over the years um, to see the, the kind of support that the local community has for, uh, for protecting the turtle habitat this is something that we have uh, that we have targeted um, as a uh, as an area of concern for us that we want to continue to make act we've, we've done some acquisitions uh, in this general vicinity and we want to continue to do that um, and we want to continue to be a player here in uh, in, in the land protection uh, efforts that are taking place <laughs> My name is Richard Lombard. Um, locally, I'm on the um, Groveland Open Space and Trails Committee, as well as the Parker River Clean Water Association. And I'm one of the several people who have been trying to protect um, the habitat right next door to here um, for a number of turtles, uh, particularly the Blandings turtles. Um, in the state of Massachusetts, Blandings are considered um, unthreatened, which means they're rather rare. And so our goal is to try to protect enough land so that they can continue to thrive and that's basically it <laughs> and I just tr we just I work with a number of people I try to pull people together so we can keep moving this project along until it's it, it, it happens and I look at it as actually becoming a like a bioreserve for turtles and and we also have um, some rare salamanders so we've got the um, blue spotted salamander I think the four-toed salamander, as well as the Blandings turtle. And it would make a wonderful area to make it protected. It's like a mini bioreserve. Could you please share with us who you are, what organization you're with, and how it's connected to the turtle picnic? Uh, my name is Mark Rigordovich. I'm a freelance turtle biologist. I uh, take contracts through Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program and Mass Wildlife and other nonprofit organizations to conduct turtle research uh, throughout the state and at a local nesting ground where we've had uh, volunteers come and actually help protect turtle nests and, 
and uh, check the nest for the hatchlings. And it's a good opportunity to get the local community involved with uh, a community science approach to protecting some of our local wildlife and especially some of our rare uh, turtles. And it will be on the internet. It will be on the internet too on our website. Could you please share with us who you are, what organization you belong to, and how it's connected to the turtle picnic? Uh, my name is Susan Speak, and I'm uh, the turtle researcher here at our, our research site. And I'm also an educator with the Ipswich Public Schools. Um, and what we're trying, one of, the, one of our real purposes this evening is to try and have the people from the local community uh, know about the native turtle species that are here in Georgetown. Uh, there are 10 different turtles. Here. Ten different turtle species here in the state of Massachusetts, Just and we have five of the different turtle species right here um, on the field that are nesting and using this as this kind of this is critical habitat. Um, I'm holding Blandings 339. This Blandings was um, hit by a car on June 19th. Uh, and she was found by Officer Dennis, Dennis Sullivan, who's a Georgetown police officer, uh, who brought her to our attention, and we're trying to rehabilitate her and get her, we want to re-release her uh, back into the uh, wetlands. We have 54 blanding species here, or, or 54 blanding individuals, excuse me, and um, every everyone matters uh, for this particular uh, species of turtles, so we really want to get her well and get her released into the wetlands. Francis. Um, Travis Kucher. Dustin Kucher. How did you get involved with this turtle program? Well, a friend, our old neighbor, actually is involved with the Parker River somehow, and she just found this on the web I think she got and it emailed and she knew that we like science and we like turtles so um, that's how we really got started we were at the first one of training sort of like how you do it they would show you all the different kinds of turtles they'd have like adults and buckets and they would like show us how to feel around in a few nests and um, yeah and it's on a very rainy day the first training now could you tell us um, what this no is? This is a protected nest. It starts off as we track the m mothers, make sure they have laid eggs, and, and then we put a flat, flat one of these over it. Then in like, then we change the flat one to an upper one, and then eventually put a shade on so they can get some more shade. And then, and then in this season, we're actually checking for the turtles, as I found one today. And the turtles actually came out two weeks earlier than they're actually supposed to. They were supposed to be starting now. So this is early for them. And can you tell us about this turtle here? Well, this one my brother found, and it's very shy because it's been measured it like this. Because it just came out, and it's really scared like it's going to go somewhere that it's not supposed to. And when, it, when you put him near the surface, right away he knows how to swim. Really? Yeah. And what kind of turtle is this? Spotted. Spotted? And are those an endangered species? Mm, sorta, sorta, sorta. The, the, no, they're not an endangered species. They're the sorta. Ones that we're actually doing today that are endangered are the blanding turtles, actually. And this nest is number 51. And uh, the one that she, Susan is holding over there, he's been run over by a car. And it's, and it's shell is like broken, and so he's in the hospital, and and he doesn't know how to walk anymore. So they have like a little, like a little like pool, like this big, for him to swim around. And this is Melissa DeGeneva for Georgetown's Channel Nine.